a, a, a BFD. It's huge. And I'll share that with you. But all of this is happening at the same moment that, you know, the world is ending, as it were. Fukushima is continuing to deteriorate, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. In fact, it's reached the point where the Atomic Energy Agency of, of Japan, or their version of ours, has said it's, it's an emergency, or words to that effect. Kevin Camps is on the line with us. He's the radioactive waste watchdog at beyondnuclear.org, the guys who keep track of this stuff. Kevin, welcome back to the program. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, no, no robotic pigeons here. This is serious stuff. Well, it's, uh, as you say, it's an emergency. The, uh, the groundwater is severely contaminated, and incredibly, the news headlines just keep rolling day after day. We're looking at double-digit percent increases in radioactivity levels in the groundwater on a daily basis at this point. And this has really been going on for months now. But now we come to find out, surprise, surprise, that Tokyo Electric wasn't exactly telling the world everything there was to be told. And now there are reports that this leakage has been going on to a greater or lesser extent for two and a half years since the very beginning of the catastrophe. Whoa. So how much, put this in some kind of context, how much, how much radioactive cesium does it take to cause how many cases of cancer and, and how much cesium, just to pick one element uh, or pick whatever you want, has been emitted, you know, has been dumped into the, into the Pacific Ocean? Well, cesium-137 and cesium-134 are human muscle seekers. They're mistaken by the human body for potassium. And so they go to the heart, for example. They go to the reproductive organs in humans as well. Uh, massive amounts of cesium. Uh, tritium, I'm more familiar with the figures on the tritium discharges. Tokyo Electric has admitted to 20 trillion to 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium release into the ocean. And they hasten to add, it's no big deal, it's a big ocean, it'll dilute. What they leave out is the bioconcentration factor, which means once it gets into the food chain, it concentrates up the food chain. Some of the most recent articles out of the likes of The Guardian in London is about the uh, tragedy, to put it mildly, visited upon the Fukushima fishing fleets, which are, you know, some of these fishermen, their families have been fishing since time immemorial. And it's over for them. I mean, uh, they're making money by still cleaning up tsunami debris, and they get some kind of a token payment from the national government for what they've lost because of this uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear catastrophe. But that 40 trillion becquerels of tritium figure, a becquerel is a radioactive disintegration per second. What that means is 40 trillion radioactive disintegrations per second, per second, per second, and that's going to go on in the case of tritium for 240 years is a good figure to use because that's how long it'll be hazardous in the environment. And the body treats tritium how? Tritium is radioactive hydrogen and can go anywhere in the human body that hydrogen goes, which is everywhere, right down to the DNA molecule. And the nuclear establishment worldwide, which is more of a nuclear mafia, if, if you want my opinion, will say tritium's not a big deal. It simply passes through the human body quite rapidly, and then it's gone. Well, that's not true. There's a phenomenon called organically bound tritium, where it can stick around for a good long time in your body. Right. And they also, in their deceptions and half-truths, will say that tritium is a relatively weak emitter of beta radiation. Well, uh, it's all relative, isn't it? When you're in a DNA molecule, <laughs> a relatively weak beta emission will be like a, a small little uh, hand grenade in your DNA molecule. And that's where the cancers start. That's where the birth defects start. That's where the genetic damage starts. Do we, so what's the fate and future of Fukushima, first of all? Well, we've been talking, you and I, for two and a half years about um, the danger of Fukushima Daiichi unit number four simply collapsing. It's so damaged from the explosion. And there's some 200 tons of irradiated nuclear fuel in that storage pool. Uh, in the context of what's going on now with this groundwater flooding of the site, because one of their mitigation measures, which is pretty uh, not very well thought out, was building a, a seawall by freezing the ground. And guess what? The groundwater is piling up behind the seawall. It's actually overtopping the seawall at the rate of 300 tons per day that's flowing into the ocean, radioactive water. 
But by backing up the water under the entire site, they are turning the ground into quicksand, and that's causing less uh, stability, more instability. And there are structural engineers and nuclear engineers warning that may be the, the final straw that's needed to topple not only Unit 4, but perhaps some of those other uh, destroyed units. With and, their, and, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. With their high-level radioactive waste uh, stored in pools 50 feet up in the air. Yeah, the 50 feet up in the air, when you said, you know, Unit 4 has all this radioactive material in their pool and they're concerned that number 4 is going to collapse, a lot of people, they hear pool, they think hole in the ground, they may think it's going to collapse on top of it. Wouldn't that be nice? It'll just cover it up. No, the, the pool is actually, what, five stories up, ten stories up, something like that? Yes, it was uh, designed that way for ease of removing nuclear fuel from the operating reactor core into the high-level radioactive waste storage pool. But the situation is they can't support a crane to lift 100-ton loads of irradiated fuel in transfer casks. That's the radiation shielding out of the pool and onto the ground. That's why they're stuck. They can't get the waste out. Senator Wyden, back in April of 2012, visited Fukushima Daiichi, put on a radiation protection suit, toured the site, and came back to the United States, called on the U.S. government at the highest levels to get over there and deploy the full resources of the U.S. government. Because if that pool goes down and that fuel is still in there, it'll be on fire, and the radioactivity releases will dwarf what has happened thus far at Fukushima Daiichi. There's no radiological containment around the pools. In fact, there's not even a, a roof over them anymore. They're open air at this point. And the prevailing winds and the prevailing ocean currents take water from the coast of Japan where? To North America. I mean, uh, within days of the Fukushima Daiichi catastrophe beginning, we were getting uh, fallout coming down in rain in the United States, not in insignificant quantities. And also, of course, the, uh, the seafood, um, not only does the ocean's currents bring the radioactivity this way, but also uh, the sea life itself, the bluefin tuna, uh, migrated from Japan to North America and carried the radioactive cesium in its flesh over here. Wow. Not a good time to be eating tuna, um, it, it would seem. Is, has there been any determination of, the, of radiation in seafood on the west coast of the U.S.? Well, um, it's thrown upon the American citizen to do that for themselves. Our federal government seems to be busy with other things. But the situation is the same in Japan. Ordinary citizens. And yes, uh, tuna and uh, sea kelp, there is uh, radioactivity. In wow. Kevin Camps, the radioactive waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. You can log on to their site and read all about it, beyondnuclear.org. Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Tom.